Hi, Michelle and Laura here from the Martini Club International. We are so pumped to bring you some great ideas that we've just picked up coming through from San Francisco and the beautiful Napa Valley. Each year we try and tag into different cities all around the world to figure out what our bartending friends are up to, check in on some of the trends, see what people are drinking, and then we bring all that back into our office here and start doing some serious consulting work it's with the likes of you guys. It's the hard part of the job, right? It's, it is a tough it's job. And, and bar to bar to bar to bar, city bar, to city, drink, drink. It's, friends it's everywhere. Hard. Oh. But one of the best things coming out of San, well, a couple of good things coming out of San Francisco. One, I really liked their eye to detail. The bartenders there were a great community, one. Two, the eye to detail. Like just every single move they made from setup of their bar, the great garnishing on the drinks, to all the new glassware I'm seeing, by the way. Kind of a cool trend. Um, and then, of course, off we trotted down the Napa Valley to check out on some wines. And along the way, we came across, I don't know, about half a dozen fantastic Sauvignon Blancs. And lo and behold, each time we taste a new one, we say, wait a minute, this would be a great white sangria. So I'm going to turn you over to Laura, who's going to whip you up our brand new Napa Valley sangria here live today at the Martini Club. Okay, so this can be made entertaining size, which is fantastic. You put it in a big punch bowl, you put it in a pitcher for everybody, easy breezy. I'm going to make the individual size today, and it really is an homage to our recent trip. Uh, we're using the Sauvignon Blanc, of course, but we're also trying to get a little bit of the infusion of those uh, very good-looking San Francisco bartenders. Okay, another trend. Yes, good-looking bartenders. <laughs> Carmen. So, we got my lovely glass filled with ice. This is a maraschino liqueur. Just gonna put an ounce of that in. Then I've got a combination of peach juice and lemon juice. Putting things in little vessels. Very trendy. Yep. It looks good on the bar, too. Uh, and it's fantastic for uh, speed of execution. You get things done really, really quickly. Oh, my beautiful, I decanted my Sauvignon Blanc. Excellent. Yes, well, you know. Excellent. Two ounces of that. Two ounces of my favorite suspension, Ocean Spray White Cranberry. Now, I have to tell you, that on its own is absolutely delicious, but, yeah. but it's, it's not enough yet. Every drink these days, as they did in the 1800s, needs a dash of bitters. This is an Angostura orange bitters. Really livens up the drink. It really does. And then I'm going to put some wonderful fresh fruit. I have some peaches, limes. That's going to make things look good. Oh Chopped boy. Up green, purple grapes. No, I've gone all out. All this from the kitchen too. Like half the time, most of your kitchen's carrying exactly this in the back. So, And I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of a mint sprig. That looks outstanding. There we go. It's a Napa Valley Sangria. Napa Valley Sangria. And I know to all the sangrias in the world right now, we're seeing them on menus left, right, and center, and talk about a beautiful presentation, and also, of the most important, profit. A lot of profit sits right here. You don't mind, do you? That's worth a toast. Cheers. Cheers. How'd I do? Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc Sangria. Excellent.